matier than the sword, the pen. Uh, well, it's matier anyway. And now, if you'll excuse uh, blots and bad writing, we'll get on with our line. Primitive man had all the luck. He couldn't write. But with a flint or stick, he could make the sort of signs that some professionals have since adopted as their signatures. He found that a stick, accidentally broken, made a point that drew clearer pictures. There was no such thing as equality in those days. Man had to do as he was told. So with the first pen, one of the first men sits down to write home to mother. But alas, the broken stick or bone wasn't to stay that way. With the progress, or, or otherwise, of civilization, the urge to put it in writing became so acute that the Egyptians invented a reed pen. They wrote with a reed, uh, though they couldn't always read what they wrote. But the constant dipping in the pigment was a nuisance, so they produced the first fountain pen. In use, the pen bent, opening a small slit which let in the air and allowing the pigment to flow to the point. And here's where the trick was done. Compare that with a modern fountain pen, compact, practical and almost foolproof, though only the old reed pen could possibly form those complicated Persian characters. But even today there are pens and pens, the multiple for music, for instance, and the ditto for drawing lines on account forms. Tax collectors use a pen that draws blood out of a stone. But thanks to the courtesy of the Science Museum, we're able to show you such marvellous writing devices as the harmonograph, with one pendulum holding the paper and the other the pen. A chuck pen for drawing geometrical designs suitable for engraving. A variation of the same idea. A turn of the handle moves the pen arm which draws harmonic curves. The elliptograph for a perfect ellipse. The drawing is made by keeping the pen pressed against the edge of the gauge. A geometrical pen that will draw a great variety of intricate designs, all of them perfectly formed and perfectly balanced. The antigraph for drawing the reverse half of a figure. A tracing point is fixed to one arm and a pencil to the end of the other. And the pantograph for making larger or smaller copies of an original drawing. The scale of enlargement can be chosen at will and set quite accurately. And there's a suspension device that takes the weight off pen and tracer and makes for smooth working. And that's worth enlarging upon. 